This is episode number 64 of The Inspiring Talk with best-selling author on happiness, Mike Viking. Welcome guys to The Inspiring Talk. My name is Vijay Gautam. I'm host for this show. Each week I interview today's most successful and inspiring personalities to help you realize your inner potential. I'm excited for this episode as I have invited an expert on happiness to share his insights. Mike Viking is CEO of Happiness Research Institute based in Copenhagen, Denmark, where they explore about why some societies are happier than others. Mike is a New York Times best-selling author who has penned down several books and reports on the subject of happiness. He travel across the globe to speak at different conferences and events to share about his findings on happiness. He is a TEDx speaker and has been featured in the Huffington Post, The Guardian, Business Insider among others. On this episode, we explore different factors that makes us happy. How Nordic countries are happier as compared to other parts of the world. what can you do today to become happier and a lot more before we jump in i would request you to take a pause and take a screenshot of this episode right now and share it as your instagram story and don't forget to tag me at the rate busy speaks i would highly appreciate that now without further ado let me welcome mike viking <music> All right guys, we have got Mike Viking here with me today. Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. What's keeping you busy at the moment? <laughs> um well, well now my listeners know that I've got a guy who studies happiness because that <laughs> laughter at the beginning of the so so is how happy this person is and he does the same research yeah go ahead my my daily work is essentially trying to answer three questions um i'm trying to sort out how we can measure happiness why some people are happier than others and how we can improve quality of life so i've i've spent the uh, past 6 years on this question um i'm going to spend the next 40 years on those questions but to today you know my my uh, my days book with with meetings and deliveries and um interviews and the tv crew are arriving shortly so so uh today it's about logistics and uh, travel uh but usually it's those uh, other questions that are so obviously we are going to talk about those three questions uh throughout this conversation today one of the things that we have you know said is um figuring out how to measure the happiness right so my first question to you uh mike would be then is it possible to measure happiness really it looks like it is i mean the the data we get in with the metrics we use um show what we would expect we would find so we find that people lose their job they become less happy we find that when people become sick they become less happy when people get married they become happier when they increase their income they become happier so so what we would expect we find we also find with the metrics we use but i mean obviously it's uh, difficult to measure something that is subjective something that is as intangible as happiness is but it's i mean what we can see is that it's not impossible and we have some good metrics that can give us valuable information about how people experience their lives and i think we also overlook that we study a lot of other things that are subjective we study depression we study stress we study uh, you know what is good management uh, all of those things are are subjective and i don't see why it should be more difficult to study a positive emotion compared to for example negative emotions yeah i agree to you in terms of like measuring depression but i think on those emotions we say the person is depressed or the person is not depressed right mm-hmm. uh so in you know when you are measuring happiness you are saying some people are more happier as compared to the other right so what you know how do you define uh for instance if we look at the list that is you know published every year like these are the most happiest countries as compared to other then what are those different metrics that are 
uh, taken into consideration or maybe when you are doing your own research or studies how do you say this person is more happier as compared to the another or is there is there a really a scale yeah there are, there are scales and we are applying them um also the the UN that publishes the world happiness report also apply scales um obviously happiness is a wide umbrella term so usually we break happiness down into different dimensions uh, one dimension could be how satisfied with life people are uh, perhaps on a scale from 0 to 10 but you could also look at what kind of emotions do people experience on a daily basis uh, you can use something called the positive and negative effect scale looking at 10 positive and 10 negative uh, emotions So so yeah there are scales being applied uh, that that seem to capture what people experience in terms of emotions uh, what we ideally like to do is uh, we like to follow large groups of people over time to see how different changes in their life circumstances impact um different dimensions of well being so uh, following 10,000 people from delhi over 10 years we're going to see a lot of changes in their lives um uh, people uh, doubling their incomes or getting married having kids uh, getting perhaps divorced losing their jobs and then we can start to see what is the average impact of uh, those life events on on happiness great so uh one of the things when you were talking about measuring happiness or the factors that determines people happiness was the lifestyle right uh, so how does that impact the happiness of the people and what are the other factors that you know you have found most impacts the happiness of people so if we look at the country level and and look at the world happiness report which includes 155 countries we can see when it comes to to that overall happiness feeling you know being satisfied with the life we are living and there is actually uh, six factors that impact um or six factors that explain 75% of the variance between happiness levels in those countries so first there is wealth gdp per capita levels we can see on average richer countries are happier uh, mainly because being uh, poor is a cause of worry and stress and unhappiness secondly we can see uh, healthy life expectancy also matters obviously when we become sick we are less happy thirdly there is freedom to make life choices so are we able to choose the course in life we want uh fourthly is there good governance in the country so low level of corruption trust towards government trust towards the political institution uh, fifth we can see the level of generosity in a society is also a factor and then uh, lastly we can see social support matters so do we feel we have somebody in our lives we can rely on in times of need so those are not all the factors uh, we can see genetics matter we can see age matter we can see social comparisons matter what we spend our time on matters but at a country level and when we look at the world happiness report those are some of the main factors i think it's interesting uh, that you have given a lot of uh, you know different factors that you have found that affects the happiness we'll get into that one by one in a moment but um one thing that you have said is um you know let's let's look at the first factor that you have said which is wealth right and uh, you know on your ted talk you have also mentioned that 50% people would normally say i would rather on 50000 us dollar where everyone else on 25000 dollars versus earning 1 million where everybody earns 10 millions right so uh, it is a uh, Uh, about the relative income it's not about the absolute income right so how how does that feeds to the um, you know unhappiness of the people like comparing uh, with the other person uh, even if i'm earning enough then you know i compare with people uh, and then you know um, and i feel uh, you know unhappy about it so so how how important is that factor in in terms of uh, you know what you have seen uh, globally how much that factor comes into play uh for for the happiness of people well it it shows up quite a bit um it shows up that we are social beings that we do compare ourselves with with other people 
Um, and yes, absolute income is important, uh, our ability to consume different goods and services. But as you say, we also care about relative income. So how much money do we make compared to our neighbors, our friends, our, our family members? Um, because what people also care about beyond pure consumption is our position in the social hierarchy. And income is a proxy, it's a signal. Uh, for uh, for that position. So it's something that is a factor when we look at income. It's also a factor when we look at other aspects in life. Um, beauty is also a relative position. You know, how strong, how good our marriages is, um, is perhaps something we also evaluate compared to what we see around us. So we are social beings. We, we look at other people when we evaluate our lives and and and, and the things we have in that um, so it's 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 a quite a common pattern actually another thing that i found pretty uh, interesting about uh, you know the uh, you know the work that you have done and also the factor that you have mentioned uh, um, is social connections mm-hmm. that plays a huge huge role in terms of people feeling happy uh, or maybe you know feeling that sense of belonging and also um, the same thing is um, reported or maybe you know presented on the book ikigai about the ogemi village you know in in uh, japan where this is where people are consistently living the longest um, life uh, and you know one of the factors is how they come together as a society and then as a community and do a lot of things together in a community um and uh, so so why do you think you know that affects us so much when you know if we have everything and then the social connectedness how you know wh- why do you think that affects uh, the happiness a lot well first of all you you're correct i mean it, it is um one of the best predictors of whether people are happy or not whether they are happy with their relationships and whether we look at, at local data, national data, or international data, uh, being satisfied with our relationships um, is an important factor. And often it's it's the most important factor. So, uh, so if we cannot ask people directly how happy they are with their lives, uh, we, um, I mean, we, we could then ask how satisfied they are with their relationships because that gives us a pretty good indicator of, of where they are uh, with re- regards to to happiness levels why that is the case is is perhaps more a a psychological um, view you know maslow's hierarchy of needs Uh, social needs come in quite uh, close to the 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 fundamentals Um, we are social beings our survival have been based on our ability to cooperate to be part of 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 um, a group Um, so i think we're just wired uh, to have a need for social connection and belonging if if you compare some of the common things about the happiest countries what are those most common things that you have identified on these happiest countries well it, it is those factors we, we talked about earlier uh, gdp levels healthy life expectancy trust um, freedom generosity and and social support um that that's sort of the the overall pattern what is then also um the case for the Nordic countries is that when we look at, at GDP levels, um, there's also some countries that are better at converting their wealth into well-being. So invi- investing in the right places in terms of delivering quality of life for people. So investing in healthcare, investing in education, investing in infrastructure for people instead of infrastructure for cars, I think are some of the strategic wiser decisions in terms of what governments do uh, with with um, the resources they have available and we can see all the nordic countries are also good in in this field um, so there there is there are patterns also across uh, or beyond the, the, the six factors we talked about so is there also a difference between the perception of happiness in the nordic countries versus the other other countries like the perception of happiness I think we overestimate how different we are actually when it comes to happiness. Um, I think you know the more conversations I have with people uh, from around the world, the more I see how similar we are when it comes to the perception of the good life and what we 
believe drives happiness. Um, so, you know, we are Indian and, and Danish, but we are first and foremost uh, human beings. Um, so we, we are pretty much wired the same way, I would say, when it comes to happiness. Of course, there are some differences also within a country, but I think most people would agree that being in good health, having a happy and healthy family, having something to do which we enjoy, having freedom, having enough resources not to worry about financial matters, having good friends, being able to enjoy good food. I think those things would be ingredients that most of us would include in a, a recipe for the good life. So I, I don't I don't think we are more different when it comes to happiness than, for example, when it comes to um, you know, what is beauty or what is sadness, what is loneliness. Um, of course, they are subjective um, emotions, but, but I think there is also a lot of consensus about um, what that is. So, Mike, what we have been talking about is one of the things is about the social connectedness, like, you know, feeling the sense of belonging, being part of the community and, you know, having those meaningful connections with people where, you know, the people whom you can fall back on when you are going through some problems or challenges in your life, right? But in this age of social media, where we can connect literally with anyone in the world, but each other, we are, you know, losing that sense of connectivity. So how can we increase this um, you know, uh, this connectedness with each other and the greater sense of belonging, if if there is any examples that you'd like to share? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really exciting things that, that people are doing around the world and, and we are trying to gather cases on, on social media, actually. One is, you know, people starting community libraries around the world, you know, the leave a book, take a book principle. We see uh, people coming together in streets, uh, taking their streets and turning them into communities where they have movie nights and pizza nights and, and, and help each other out. Um, we see streets that are uh, coming together and uh, providing an alternative to uh, their kids always being on their iPhones and digital devices and saying, listen, on Fridays, we'll We'll do no phone Fridays and uh, our kids uh, run out and, and play uh, like I used to do when I was growing up. So I think, I think there's a lot happening and I think people are longing for community. I think people are uh, seeking new forms of, of connection. So I think there's a lot of positive things happening. Uh, and I think these are some of the things that people can implement on their own community or maybe on their organization, right? So every Friday... Um, you know, or maybe every Thursday or maybe decide a day where uh, you don't want to have phone and then, you know, do some fun activities together. And I like that idea of, uh, you know, uh, kids getting together and playing uh, without phone, yeah. uh, which, which is, uh, you know, pretty interesting uh, thing to hear. So should people really be chasing happiness? Uh, <laughs> I mean, our, that, of course, up to the people to themselves to, to decide. I think... Um, one strategy could also be to to chase other things and then let happiness happen as a byproduct of those things. Um, and I, I like to say that perhaps we should, instead of having the pursuit of happiness, having the happiness of pursuit. Um, having please explain that. Yeah. So so it it, it comes back to the importance of purpose. Uh, working for something that is bigger than us um, um, or pursuing building a strong community, building a good relationship with our family and friends, uh, having something we're interested in, something we're passionate about, hobbies, uh, doing something meaningful, doing something active, doing something together with other people. Those things, I think, are worthy things to chase. And then hopefully I think people will find that happiness will come as a byproduct of those pursuits. Uh, but I think sometimes happiness as the main goal, as the main pursuit can also be a little bit tricky, uh, perhaps better served by, uh, by chasing it as a byproduct of something else. So one more thing that, uh, you know, I realize at least in uh, most part of the world, everybody even though you have shared a lot of different things like social connectedness, sense of belonging, uh, having that bigger sense of purpose, health, but 
primarily if we look at the i'm not trying to generalize the whole thing but if we look at most part of the world everyone is chasing the wealth having that perception that more money equals more happiness is it so what have you observed like are the richest people the happiest ones overall people who are richer are also more satisfied with life but um they also suffer from depression they also some suffer from loneliness they also suffer from lack of purpose in life the reason why we see this relationship that happier or sorry richer people are happier is probably because they eliminate some causes for unhappiness you know being worried about making ends meet being worried about being able to provide you know food home um, education for our kids of course that matters to people if if people are lacking funds that is a cause of worry and stress and anxiety and and unhappiness but money is no guarantee for happiness it does eliminate some causes for for unhappiness but um, there's a lot of other uh, reasons uh, to be happy beyond uh, financial ones or well, and 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 to be unhappy You are CEO of uh, Happiness Research Institute. How cool is that? Happiness Research Institute, right? So, yeah. So, w- what are the things that you do on the Happiness Happiness Research Institute? What are the different uh, researches uh, or the studies that you uh, do under your institution? And how 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 did this whole thing ca- came about? So, we work with a lot of uh, different clients, uh, companies, foundations, uh, cities. and actually trying to shed some light on those questions we talked about in the in the beginning so how we can measure the good life why some people are happier than others and how we can improve the quality of life so when we look at happiness data when we look at research when we look at the evidence considering how we should design policies differently workplaces differently cities differently uh, that that is what we're trying to do and it came about because our I was curious to understand why is it that Denmark is often doing well in the happiness rankings and why is it that more and more governments are looking at new measures for progress instead of just looking at gdp per capita levels more uh, governments uh, looking at well-being quality of life happiness as as a better metric to capture in which uh, direction the country is actually moving What's your definition of happiness after having researched a lot about happiness across the world uh, and you know looking at the different part of the uh, you know uh, worlds and uh, researching on people about what makes them happy so what's your definition of happiness if you have to define happiness how would you define it I mean the, the factors for happiness is is the many things we we talked about uh, now but I think that sort of the definition of happiness is the one i use is also also very wide It recognizes that um that happiness is not a one ingredient dish uh, so i i like to to work with a def- definition that is the experience of joy and positive well-being and um having a strong sense of purpose and meaning in life So it's both how we feel right now uh it's experiencing positive emotions on a daily basis it's being overall satisfied with our life feeling that the life we are living is worthwhile and meaningful so that's a super wide definition but um you know we also talk about other wide complex phenomena like uh, the economy which we also need to break down into different components so if we talk about the indian economy we would break that down into you know growth gdp per capita unemployment rate inflation and all that and that gives us a language to talk about how is the indian economy doing and i think that's also the approach to uh, happiness so what are the few things that we can do today to become more happier or maybe something that you have implemented since you started doing you know more research obviously you are a danish person already happy but maybe to become more happier after you started doing research uh, under happiness uh, research institute are there things that you have you know you know brought about or maybe changed in your own life which you think uh, has increased your happiness level uh, which you know the people listening to this podcast can implement on their life to become more happier in their own life yeah, i think one one key takeaway from happiness research is underlining the 
important of our relationships. Uh, we also have sort of an ABC in Denmark for good mental health. And I think uh, there is a sort of a, a three step towards boosting your mood on a daily basis. And that is uh, doing something active, uh, doing something meaningful and doing something together with other people. Um, that trinity uh, is, I would say, the, the best universal recipe we have for boosting your mood uh, that could also lead to high levels of, of life satisfaction. So I, I would encourage people to look at opportunities in in those fields wow i think you summarized the whole conversation just by saying abc as simple as that uh, mike now it's time for the enlightening round what inspires you to do everything that you do <laughs> um i think mainly curiosity which one daily habit do you believe has been game changer in your success journey i think perhaps being guided by what i'm passionate about and not necessarily what will bring me the most money. Um, I think when you are passionate about something, uh, then uh, fortunately um, that might also lead to uh, income uh, down the run or down the line. Could you share a book or two that has influenced you in the recent past? Uh, Factfulness by Hans Rosling, um, Swedish uh, statistician. Uh, about the condition of the world and letting facts speak, uh, I think is is a must read for every uh, social scientist and scientist in general. All right, Mick. Um, so, um, you know, we have come to an end of this interview. Uh, thank you so much for being here. So, but before I wrap this interview, there is one more question. Before one more question left for you. Before I ask you that question, uh, if people would like to reach out to you or maybe you know uh, read more about your work. Uh, how, what is the best possible way? I'll check out uh, check out our website. Uh, so the happy, or happiness research institute dot com. Uh, we have um, available reports and and uh, bits and pieces that people can read about our work. So I would start there. And also, guys, I'll highly recommend uh, you to check his book, uh, the Little Book of Huga. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Mm-hmm. And also. Uh, the little book of Luca. So these are the Danish words for the happiness. This is the Danish word for the happiness. He has, uh, you know, put everything together about how Danish people and you know uh, are more happier as compared to the other part of the world. And uh, you know, uh, everything that he has found in the research is on the book. Go and you know just give a read. So here's the last question for you, uh, Mike. So. Imagine that you are standing on a stage on the largest ever built stadium in this world and there are millions of people on that stadium and you are there on stage and you have to share the most important lesson that you have learned in your life to all these millions of people on that stadium. What would be your message? It would be to repeat the ABC we talked about before. Uh, The ABC act, do something active, belong and commit so do something together with other people, do something active and do something meaningful. That's my best universal advice for happiness. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. I really enjoyed having this conversation. Uh, thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you. Dear listener, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Inspiring Talk podcast. I hope you got some inspiration or learned something. If you did, make sure to share this message with your friends by visiting theinspiringtalk.com forward slash 6464. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter at the red busy speaks and let me know what you think about the show. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you in the next. Now, go out there and do something inspiring.